So the human brain. Let's see in numbers. 100 billion neurons, 100 trillion connections at least. This seems really like amazing numbers, are they? I will say. I never thought that one day I will, in my lifetime, say what I'm going to say now. We, human, are not anymore alone at the top of the thought chain. Now, with those generative models called transformers and the like, nicknamed ChatGPT, DALI, those have trillion to hundred of trillion of parameters in par with human intelligence. So now, human and machine have to collaborate. We are ready for it. And as a neuroscientist and a computer scientist, I see that both fields are facing the same question and the same challenges. What's going on in the black box? The black box of the natural human brain, deep neural networks with really a lot of connection, and the black box of those GPT and other uh, generative models with trillion of connection. And as a neuroscientist in my lab in CCEL, we are building tools now to look into the human brain to make the human brain processes more transparent. So let's look at human brain processes. Let's have a virtual tour of what it means for your brain to see or hear or touch something. So to set up the context, I'm going to show you a short demo of images one at a time for only half a second each. And then I will show you what's happening in human brain like yours when you're watching a collection of image for half a second. So be ready because the images goes by fast. Then I will have the Q&A. All right, so it was only half a second each. But if you were like me, you have had this overwhelming feeling that you could see everything when the image was there. Now memory is fleeting and going away. But let's remember. OK, so we had the pyramid. What else? Einstein. 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 Lincoln. 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 Yes, as well as I think there was uh, a shot of the movie Star Wars. So when you were looking at those for half of a second, you had this this overwhelming feeling that you could see everything. Yes, you could see really a lot. So look at the timer. I'm going to show you the 500 milliseconds of seeing an image. Let's start. All right, first signature that we capture on 70 milliseconds in the back of the brain. At this time, then, about 100, 200 milliseconds, you cannot move your eyes. You're frozen in time. You are not conscious, but your brain has analyzed many, many of the features. 300, 400 milliseconds, you start seeing, oh, it's Einstein, and still a lot of details being analyzed. So in the experiment, after 500 milliseconds, the screen went black. And what you see here are the responses of our subject. After those 500 milliseconds, the screen is black, but the brain is still seeing, hallucinating, and uh, processing those uh, details and information. So those are called spatial temporal maps. And we can build those maps for literally any processes happening in the brain. I show it uh, right now to you about vision. So let's have another virtual tour now about audition. So now what I'm going to show you are what's happening in your brain when you just have heard a sound for about half a second, actually, a collection of sound. So half a second goes by fast. It's enough to say hi, bonjour, guten tag, merci. So just one word. It's also enough to start hearing the sound of a cell phone or a bird or a, a crowd or what's going on outside. So 500 milliseconds of a sound, and let's see what the human brain is doing with them. Sam, watch the timer. So we see 
responses in the top of all, your ears are here, so that's where our sound processing starts, around 70 milliseconds. And then, around 150 milliseconds, you're going to see in the top part of the brain, prefrontal, like much more activity. That's actually a zone that is specialized for voice, voices. Also react to um, animals sound, but really, really voices. We are 290, 300 milliseconds, you're not conscious, but your brain has done a really, really long list of analysis on the sound. And what we observe is that a lot, a lot of regions are involved in uh, just sound processing of a sound for half a second. And around 300, 400 milliseconds, there's a collection of regions that are specialized for vision that start activated after a sound, like a sort of mental imagery of what you just heard. And in this experiment, after half a second, the same, our subject were uh, then put into silence. Their eyes were closed, so it was silence for about a second. And so after those 500 milliseconds, there was still the sound processing and going on uh, into your brain. So now, having a cap or hat that will calculate and read out what you are hearing or thinking of or seeing while you're walking around is science fiction. That is not what I'm showing here. The way we build those in basic research is we have to put together 15 or 16 brain of different people that go for hours into an fMRI scanner or an MEG machine. And then all the magic is at the level of the data analysis where we have to relate some signals that are very different in space and time. And then with a lot of analysis, we can come up with those average maps, three-dimensional maps, of on average what's going on for different processes. So what can we do with those spatial temporal maps? Well, there are huge opportunities in basically diagnostic of brain disorder, attentional deficit, potentially sign of autism or other mental health issues. Why? Because a lot of the, the, those diagnoses based on uh, if we are losing memory or if we have motor uh, control issue and so on, um, involve the entire brain, the entire brain dynamics. And the method that we have been pioneer in the lab is looking at this whole brain dynamics. So there, there's some huge opportunity to see to which extent we could compare control group to a patient group with some brain disorder and hopefully come up with diagnosis much early on, that's what's possible. And then, well, we're in par with those uh, huge, uh, those generative models, there's now a lot of opportunity um, for human AI communication with AI assistant that may one day be able to maybe see in your mind. Not yet, thank you. <laughs>